Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and I'm Dr. Cindy Wong and today I would like to continue on where I left off last time and talk more about my experiences as a resident. The last two videos I talked about basically all of the anatomical pathology experience. So like I said, I am an AP only graduate. So I do have some experience in clinical pathology and this is what I would like to share with you, but I would have to say I can't give a very great explanation of what clinical pathology will be like for everyone else since, you know, I didn't really go through all of it, but I did go through the, some of the major ones, which is blood bank and hem hematopathology and some of the smaller ones like molecular coagulation, HLA, immunology, and cytogenetics. Okay. Uh, so let's start off with transfusion medicine and blood bank. This is also another part of pathology where you will have patient interaction because a good portion of transfusion medicine is the apheresis service. So apheresis is basically a procedure where you remove a specific component of blood that is diseased and you replace it with something that is either the same component but from a healthy donor or like or with saline or something of hematological equivalence. So the different apheresis procedures that are done is breast cell exchange apheresis, which is where you take away diseased red blood cells and replace it with healthy red blood cells. This is most commonly done for patients who have sickle cell disease and they uh, have, have such a high sickle cell load where giving regular transfusions is not enough to help with their symptom management. So they come and they get uh, breast cell exchange done. The machine will remove uh, red blood cells from the patient and we will uh, put back in normal red blood cells from healthy donors. So that is one of the common ones we do. Another common procedure we do is uh, therapeutic plasma exchange apheresis, also known as plasmapheresis, where as the name suggests, we remove the plasma from the patient and replace it with either a healthy plasma or replace it with albumin, and, um, which is basically like osmotic equivalent to plasma. We do this for people who have antibodies that are causing pathologies within the patient. So one would be like, for example, Manistia gravis, where you have autoantibodies. So when we do this, we remove the plasma, which contains the antibody portion, and then we replace it with either albumin or more plasma. A rare procedure that's done is platelet freezes, which as the name suggests, we remove the platelets and this basically is done for patients who are hyperthrombotic. So most commonly in pathology residency, when you're on blood bank, you'll see red cell exchanges or plasma freezes. They're the most commonly done. And this is the portion of blood banking where you actually, as a pathology resident, do interact with patients because when we do these apheresis procedures as a resident, you are the one who goes to the patient. Again, you're the one who's doing the consent form. You're explaining the you're going to them explaining the procedure, the risks and the benefits, and then you're also also need to do a very brief like history and very general physical because afterwards you actually have to write a note in epic saying this was done and this is how the patient was and this is if there was any issues that occurred during the procedure this is the portion of pathology that is most like medicine i feel like people who uh in pathology end up missing that patient interaction ends up a lot of them end up doing blood banking for this very reason all right so apheresis procedures are a good chunk, maybe say 50%. Um, the other portions is the blood bank itself. So the blood bank in the hospital is basically the department where all of the blood products are stored. And this is also where they do like type and screen, type and cross match. And our job as pathology residents is basically product utilization because all of those other testing is done by text. Like I said, a lot of things in CP are done by text and the residents and the pathologists are really more in charge of running the lab and making sure everything goes smoothly, answering text questions and also to kind of do finalized reports so in terms of in the blood and the blood bank we do end up having to do blood product utilization uh which is basically we are the first blocker of in uh, proper blood product usage uh the most commonly flagged ones are platelets so platelets is more rare as a donation because platelet donation requires a longer, I think it requires like 
two, three, you have to be there for two, three hours for them to like cycle the blood and collect all the platelets. Because of that, less people are willing to do it and not everyone qualifies to donate for platelets. So the platelet supply is always on short. Each unit of platelets in the blood bank is actually a pool of six donors. So that's why platelets are uh, one of the most ones where residents are the, there to make sure it's properly used. So in our hospital, we always give first platelet for free in the sense that, you know, <laughs> we don't bother the clinicians when they want their first platelet for their patients. But if the clinicians want more platelets, the second, the third, or however many more they want, the residents get paged and we have to go through the patient chart and decide if platelets are indicated or not. So there's a lot of clinical uh, clinician interaction with us. So we have to contact the clinicians, be like, hey, I've looked through the chart and um, I feel like this person probably don't need these platelets and they'll the clinician will always be like oh no then we definitely need it we definitely need the patient's bleeding you just have to make sure like there is an indication for the platelets uh there are some really sick patients who even if you give them platelets it just gets all chewed up and it, it doesn't have any effect in the body. So for example, there are patients in the hospital who are so sick that their platelet count is literally three. These are the patients where if you give them a unit of platelet, their platelet bump will be very insignificant. And then at that point, you're just thinking like, I understand a platelet count of three or two is very it's no good, right? They're at high risk of bleeding out anywhere. But at the same time, giving them platelets don't really solve their issue. It's another illness that's causing this issue. So until that gets fixed, giving them more platelets won't, it's more like a, a bandage. So a lot of times for these patients, we have to work very closely with the clinicians and be like, hey, we can't give this patient a constant infusion of platelets. How about we say in a day they get um, no more than two units of platelets or three units of platelets until, you know, their issue is resolved. The other things in blood bank we have to take care of is antibody testing. The techs do the actual assays to look for antibodies in the blood, but we have to read the testing and write the report saying this patient has no antibodies uh, or this patient has antibodies against whatever antigen of red blood cells they have, right? And they therefore cannot get blood with this antigen in it. And so it's very important uh, report and there's so many of it in one day. Other things that we have to do would be uh, write reports when there is blood transfusion reactions. That's when a patient gets uh, a unit of red blood cell uh, plasma, whatever, and they get a reaction, which are, which is like, you know, they get a fever or they get shortness of breath or they have an anaphylactic response. So when that, that happens, we have to work with the clinicians and figure out if the patient is having an actual response to the blood. And if they do have a, uh, an actual response to the blood, we have to make sure that they're not having a more adverse reaction. And then we'll work with the clinician and tell them how to proceed in the future in giving blood or if even if this patient is safe enough to receive more blood products. So that is a general gist of how pathology residents are involved with the blood bank department. And then the last thing pathology residents are are uh, involved in is the blood donation center. The blood donation center is run by nurses, but we as uh, the blood bank resident, we would occasionally get phone calls from them saying, hey, um, I just want to make sure about this blood donation criteria. Uh, this patient has traveled to blank country recently. Are they qualified to donate? So we just have to make sure that a patient is uh, qualified to donate blood or not. The other thing we do for the blood donation center is if a donor is having a reaction in the blood donation center, we are there to go and do a quick HPI and a quick physical to make sure that they're okay. Like for example, if a person's donating blood and they faint, we just need to, you know, go there and make sure that it was just because of a vasovagal response or, um, you know, nothing more serious. So yeah, there's a lot of patient interactions in blood banking. <laughs> so in that sense, I feel like blood bank is probably one of the more labor intensive, stressful rotations in uh, residency. It's also one of the, the things in uh, pathology that has the most calls at night. When you're on call for blood bank, you'll 
for sure every night be page for blood utilization uh issues or the emergent overnight apheresis procedures this is one of the few places in we in uh, pathology where if we're on call and an emergency apheresis procedure happens, we actually have to come into the hospital. So blood bank is definitely up there in terms of stress and just amount of work you do as a resident and how hands on you are. That said, this is at my institution where we actually have a very like robust blood bank rotation for the residents. I have heard in other uh, programs where on blood bank, you're kind of just like the person they're shadowing and you do some lectures and you don't really do much. Okay, yeah, so that's blood bank. Maybe I'll go into a more specific blood bank video in the in the future because blood banking is, in my, in my experience, quite extensive. So I hope you guys found this educational. Um, if you like my channel and my content, please support me by liking and subscribing and comment down below if you have any questions and I will see you guys next time. Bye.